Hi, I'm Cressel Anderson, this is Maker Size. In this episode, I'll show you how I build this chainsaw mill from scratch. Before I get into the details of how I made this mill from scratch, I'll take a moment to describe what a chainsaw mill is and why they're a great accessory for your chainsaw. A chainsaw mill is basically a system that's designed to bolt or clamp onto your chainsaw to constrain its movement. Chainsaw mills are a good middle ground between buying milled lumber and investing in your own full-scale mill. The best part is this tool is an accessory to a tool you should already own. By helping guide your saw, the chainsaw mill can make flat cuts repeatably. Such repeatable flat cuts are useful for cutting logs into slices down their length. These slabs are great for tabletops or to further process into milled lumber for your woodworking projects. Now that you have the context, let's get started building this thing. The first step is reducing raw materials down to appropriate lengths. Then I clean them up with the grinder. With the parts pretty much ready to go, I turn my attention to fabricating a jig for constructing the clamps. These clamps go on either end of the chainsaw bar and they're what allow you to adjust the deck height relative to the bar. The jig just serves the purpose of fixturing the clamp and the clamp upright for welding. And this way I can get both the inboard and outboard clamps pretty close to identical. I remove a little bit off of the thickness with my planer because this jig serves double duty. It also helps align the upright guide to the rib. I line up the clamp bolt pads and then just tack them into place. I'll go back and kind of finish weld these later, but initially I'm just trying to get them tacked into place. It's important that the bar clamp pads are parallel to each other. Therefore, it's important that they don't move around when you're welding them. That's why I'm using locking pliers to secure it to the clamp. The next really important bit is that the holes that you drill in the clamps line up with each other. And I did this before I welded them to the clamp uprights and that way I could be sure that when I had a fastener in the one end, the hole that I drilled through the other end was perfectly aligned between the two halves of the clamp, the upper and lower half. Since the inboard and outboard clamps may or may not be identical, it's important to distinguish between them. I just used an awl and kind of dimpled in the letter A on one side and the letter B on the other side. That way I can keep them straight. With the clamp bolt pads in place, I had to do a little bit of modifications to the template. I did that with my router and that'll accommodate the little bit of extra protrusion from the clamp bolt pads. Then I went on to start welding it up. You probably remember my chainsaw milling video from late 2015. And you may remember that I had some issues salvaging the logs from my dad's red oak tree. This mill is the answer to my old chainsaw mill's lack of capacity. I designed this mill to accommodate a variable length bar, but I settled on the monstrous Oregon Power Match 34 inch bar. Well, okay, maybe it's just monstrous relative to my old 20 inch bar. At any rate, I'm pretty happy with that bar selection. It's handled everything I've thrown at it so far, and at the time it represented a pretty good trade-off between the incremental cost for a longer bar and capacity. I used an angle grinder to dial in the notch in the rib to accept the upright guide. After I had that notch pretty well where I wanted it, I again used my jig to help me line it up for welding. 
Then I cleaned it all up with an angle grinder. I cut the upright support out of a piece of angle iron, and this piece mounts in the interior of the rib assembly and provides support for the upright guide as well as a place to mount the upright lock bolt. I cut a notch on the interior of the upright guide. This window is where the upright lock bolt will enter the upright guide to effectively lock the upright into a fixed height relative to the deck. After I had the upright support welded into place, I cleaned it up with an angle grinder and turned my attention to fabricating the upright wedge. This little piece, along with its handle, is inserted into the upright guide and it provides a bearing surface for the upright lock bolt so that that way it doesn't mar up the surface of the upright. It can effectively transfer the clamping pressure from the bolt to the upright. One thing that I didn't do initially that I think is a good idea is to add a nut to the upright guide support and that way the upright lock bolt has a little bit more meat to bite into. I'm just not sure that eighth inch angle iron with threads cut into it is, is quite enough to have good durability over the long term. I mounted both ribs onto the upright of a single clamp and this fixtures both the ribs so that I can match drill them. It's not super critical, but doing this allows me to match drill the holes and then when I install the rails, they will be parallel. I cut the rails to length from a long piece of extrusion. And then I squared up the ends using my table saw sled. The 8020 hardware that I bought is a little bit long for the rails, so I had to cut off the end and I just did that using a little piece of scrap and my band saw. Once my hardware was shortened up a little bit, I assembled the ribs to the rails for the first time to kind of get a feel for what this thing was going to look like. I used some L-shaped connectors for 8020 hardware, and that's how I connected all the rails together. I assembled the chainsaw mill and test the fit with my chainsaw. After doing that, I moved on to fabricating the crank mechanism. I welded on braces to both the fore and aft crank support brackets. The crank rod is mounted through the top of the crank support brackets and its job is to be a spool essentially for the rope that I'll use to pull this chainsaw mill through the logs that I'm milling. I match drill a hole in both the crank support brackets to fit this crank rod. And then I just trimmed it up to make it a little lighter and look a little nicer. I installed the crank support brackets onto the rails of the chainsaw mill, again just using that modified 8020 hardware. I installed the crank rod into the crank support brackets and that way I could get a feel for how long I wanted that crank rod to be. I marked it with a sharpie and took it over to the chop saw and cut it to length. I threaded both ends and one end gets a thread quite a ways back onto the crank rod. That extra length is to accommodate securing the crank rod between the support brackets and it also serves as a mounting point for the crank arm and handle. The crank arm assembly consists of a piece of flat stock, a piece of rod stock, and a nut. I use a bolt to hold the nut into place while I tack it onto the flat stock. The handle's made from a piece of pine dowel, cut the length, and then drilled down its center so that it can slide on to the crank arm assembly. I added some texture to the handle using a utility knife, and then I charred the handle using my propane torch. I sanded the handle, and then I gave it a couple coats of lacquer. I cleaned up the crank arm assembly with an angle grinder and I paid special attention to that joint between the rod stock and the flat stock where the handle will be bearing. 
I took a little bit of material off of the ribs to lighten them and improve their appearance. I used some acetone to clean up the parts and then I hung them from a rack and gave them a coat of black spray paint. I drilled out the holes on my pulley to accommodate the 8020 hardware. I trimmed the clamp bolts to length once the chainsaw mill was assembled. There are a lot of off-the-shelf chainsaw mill options, and I'll put links to some of the most popular ones down in the description. But if you really enjoy exercising your inner maker, you'll want to build your own chainsaw mill. If you're interested in plans for this chainsaw mill, I'll have a link down in the description. It has the full parts list and dimensions that I use to make this mill, in addition to specific recommendations based on my actual experience using this mill. In a future episode, I'll demonstrate the use of this mill. In the meantime, check out one of my previous chainsaw milling episodes. I'll leave links down in the description. 